morning. Good morning. I want to pick up where we just left off about the control panel. Surely. And you recognize this control panel would be the Tunnel of Terror control panel at the Rock the World Amusement Park, correct? I do, yes. Uh, you told us a second ago you own the Tunnel of Terror, but under a different name as the Tunnel of Love. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was called the, the Tunnel of Love when I owned it. It got changed to Tunnel of Terror when it went to Rock the World. Now, when you owned it, the, the, besides the graffiti, this is the exact same control panel that was used at your park. Ah, uh, yes, this is the exact same one. Now, you told us a moment ago that employees, well, they put this right in the black album, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Or, did, did you see that? Well, you can't tell us if it was a mistake, can you? No, it was a mistake. Mr. Conway, is that your testimony today, that your past employees put this right into black album by mistake? Ah, uh, yes, that, that is my Mr. Conner, I want to talk about with, with these mistakes. They didn't happen multiple times, did they? Yeah, they did happen multiple times. Well, just to be clear, when you own the ride to Tunnel of Terror, it only happened twice. It did only happen twice, but I also didn't own the ride for very long. But when you had the ride, only twice did it happen where employees put the ride into Black Island. Yes, on accident. Now, I want to talk about August 29th when you saw this ride. Okay. When you saw the, the, the Tunnel of Terror, you actually got in the ride and you, took, and you rode in the ride, right? I did. I did ride the ride, yeah. It was, the, you know, yeah. So yeah. the exact same feeling that you had with the Tunnel of Love? Yeah. Now, while that ride was being operated, no mistakes occurred, right? No, there was no mistakes. I was, there was a, yeah, no, there, there was no mistakes. When you got off the ride, you took a look at the control panel, like you told us earlier, to make sure it was the same one you owned earlier. I did, yeah, I took a look at it. Well, you know that the person that was operating that ride without making a mistake, that was the defendant, right? That was, yeah, that was with Bowen that was operating the ride that day. I want to take a step back and talk about what happened when you first arrived at Rockwell on August 29th. You went to purchase a wristband. I did, yeah. You noticed a former employee named Cameron Poole working that ticket booth? Yeah, I noticed him uh, sitting over there, yeah. You purchased a world tour wristband for $35. Yep. Now, Cameron Poole, you just noticed he ran it up as a general admission pass for $20. Yeah, the register said uh, $20 in the little green portion on the top there, the display of the price, even though I gave it $35. Well, Cameron Poole told you, don't work. And that is $35, isn't that right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what he told me. He just said that the register does that a few times. Now, I want to take an even further step back to when you know, when you knew Cameron Poole, when he worked at your park. Uh, he was not the best employee in our, at uh, Wolves River Town, right? He could not be the best employee if you're stealing from me, no. Like, that's right. You caught Cameron Poole stealing from your park. I did, yeah. I, I, I'm happy I caught him. Now, you fired Cameron Poole. Absolutely, by the way, that kind of stuff doesn't apply with me. Well, you notice that the defendant, after you fired Cameron Poole, he never came to work after that. Yeah, you know, I think he was mad at me for firing uh, one of his friends. Well, you tell him, you remember, Jerry, you think that the defendant was mad at you? Yeah, I think he was mad for me firing his friend, yeah. Well, well let's make sure that, let's make sure we're clear on this fact. After you fired Cameron Poole with Bowman, she never showed up again. Uh, she yes, she has come yes. in, sir. Ask your question. Let him finish the question, and then we'll pull your objection. After firing Cameron Poole with Bowman, never showed up to work again. Uh, yeah, I believe I asked your objection. Yes, Your Honor. Ask him to answer. Okay, what do you have to say to that? Your Honor, I can move on. Well, it's the third time that we've heard it, so. Now after, now, after Cameron Poole was fired, would Bowman never call you? Um, no, she didn't ever call well, well, she never contacted, he never contacted you again, right? It's actually relevant. Well, what, what do you have to say to that? Your Honor, this line of uh, questioning tends to show the relationship that the defendant has with Cameron Poole. And because Whit Bowman is being charged with acting in complicity and committing a crime, the relationship needs to be before the jury, and that's what this line of questioning is showing. Anything else? Yes, Your Honor, the relationship between Mr. Bowman and Cameron Poole 
while indirectly related to the complicity aspect, um, does not go to show by itself complicity. And further testifying that Mr. Bowman did not go back to Rules Rivertown does not corroborate this relationship. You know, can I respond briefly? No. What I, what I would say is that you're probably right. The problem is, is that several questions have already been asked about uh, what his, this witness's opinion was as to why he didn't come back to work. That wasn't objected to. We have evidence now and then where uh, he's uh, making uh, assertions that he didn't come back because he was mad at him. Um, we've kind of made it relevant at this point, so that's all the rule. Now, Mr. Bowman, after you fired Cameron Poole, he never contacted you, right? Uh, well, my name is uh, Mr. Conroy, but yeah, yeah, Mr. Bowman did never come back. Afterwards, he never sent you a letter of resignation? No, I don't, I don't need him to send me a letter. I prefer like a verbal thing. Well, well, Mr. Well, well, Mr. Bowman, he never came to you personally and told you, I'm never working here again. He never did that, did he? No, he didn't. Well, I don't want to talk about what you know about Whit Bowman and Cameron Poole. Now, they would always take breaks together. Uh, yeah. They were always talking to each other. Yeah, I mean, there were times that they weren't talking to each other, obviously. But well, they while they worked at your park, they would, you would see them talking frequently. Yeah, yeah, they talked frequently. You would say that they were close buddies. Uh, yeah, they seemed to be friends to me, for sure. You would say that Whit Bowman and Cameron Poole, they were inseparable. They were inseparable, but they were also different uh, night and day. Bringing you back to my question, that Whit Bowman and Cameron Poole, they were inseparable. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, I already said they were. Oh, okay. everybody stop. What's your objection? To ask and answer, Your Honor. Well, I don't know the answer. The answer, I'm not quite sure what this witness's opinion is, whether or not they're inseparable or relevant to anything, but you didn't answer this question yet, so that's overruled. Right. In that case, I object to relevance, Your Honor. Okay, what's the relevance of him thinking that they were inseparable? Your Honor, if the previous employer of the defendant and Cameron Poole believed that the two of them were inseparable, again, that would establish a relationship between the two of them. And because of Mr. Bowman is being charged with acting in complicity with Cameron Poole, this tends to prove that he had done so. We don't have to say, say with this question that there was complicity, but because it, it tends to make the jury more likely to believe itself, it is relevant. But you've asked questions about how often they were together and what they did together, all the things that I guess would be the foundation for that. So what is the characterization of inseparable have to do with anything? If this witness believes that the two individuals, well, they will always be um, you know, work, working together, hanging around each other, that tends to prove complicity. This witness opinion. Subjective belief that they were it's sustained. Motion yes, correct, Your Honor. If any yes, all the questions that were appropriate regarding how often they were together and all those different things, that's not strictly. It's just as to his characterization of them as separate. Yes, Your Honor. Move on. Yes, Your Honor. When you were at Dr. Wolf on August 29th, Whit Bowman was working the tunnel upstairs, right? Yes, he was. I have nothing further, Your Honor. I'll redirect, Your Honor. 